I know I said that my holiday was going to be only in Montenegro, but I wasn't completely honest with you because I also ended up in Croatia for a day. I am currently in Dubrovnik, which is only about an hour and a half away from Tivat, where I'm staying in Montenegro, and I have been wanting to come to Dubrovnik for as long as I can remember. So being here for me is truly amazing, even if it's just for four or five hours or however long I stay here. I think the plan for today is to explore the old town more than anything, just because of the interesting history behind it. Dubrovnik in general was founded around the 7th century and was called Ragusa when it was first founded and is now a world heritage site uh, which it became after the earthquake that destroyed a lot of the areas around here in 1979. So I can't wait to start exploring. I am super excited for this and I hope you'll love it as much as I will. I love how one of the first things that I'm seeing in Dubrovnik is a replica of Santa Maria, a 15th century ship coming in with grand music playing in the background. <laughs> Yes, yes. Thank you. I've been waiting for this. I know, I know. I'm now looking at the old port, which was the main point of entry uh, into Dubrovnik back in the day. It doesn't look like much now, but I think with a bit of imagination you can see big ships coming in and big vessels docking here, and it must have been a very, very busy place. I am now walking along the fortress of Dubrovnik. So these stone walls were built between the 7th and the 17th century. Extremely old and it is a pretty big fortress so it's filled with tiny little streets that intersect uh, along the bottom and along the top. But the most fascinating thing I think is to look at the fortress from either the top or from the side just to get a sense of its grandeur, like how big it is in comparison to everything else here in Dubrovnik. All right, I am in front of the Dubrovnik Cathedral now. I took a little video for you guys of the inside. There were women singing in there, so I've muted it because honestly, it sounded a little bit creepy. <laughs> anyway, this cathedral was built on top of three former cathedrals, which were built in something like the 9th century, the 10th century, and then the 12th century. But this particular one uh, got destroyed in the earthquake that happened in 1667. That was an earthquake, by the way. My cameraman has decided to do snazzy little effects on this vlog, so leave a comment below to let me know if you enjoyed that. So there was an earthquake in 1667 that largely destroyed the cathedral behind me, but then they have slowly, slowly rebuilt it uh, to look like its former self, which is what you see right now. And then if we head over that way, you can see Stratum, which is the main street here in Dubrovnik, and it's still quite well preserved. It still looks very, very old, so pretty much authentic to what I imagine it was like back in the day. Let's go. Stratum. And if I head over that way, I think I can find some good ice cream. Okay, this is Ferrero Rocher flavor with a bit of crunch added to it. And then underneath I've got Raffaello flavor. And if you haven't had a Raffaello yet, please do try them. Raffaello's are, I think, one of my favorite Ferrero products. Uh, amazing. And I love how they gave me two little spoons as if I'm gonna share. Do they not know me but at all? As you head away from the stratum, you will notice one of Dubrovnik's main attractions, which is called the Knezeb Dvor. And this is a very famous building built in the 15th century, and it was used as the home of the prince and also a government seat. Now it is obviously more of a museum, more of a tourist attraction, uh, but nevertheless captures very well the different architectural styles that were used to build it, some in Renaissance style, some in Gothic styles, because so many architects worked on it throughout the years, and also has a museum of objects and artifacts, which is really, really interesting. Apparently, this crowded fountain behind me was used in Game of Thrones. I wouldn't know because I don't watch Game of Thrones. I'm probably gonna lose lots of followers by saying that. But if any of you have watched it and if that fountain looks familiar, then please leave a comment below. I'd love to hear about how it was used and what the setting was in Game of Thrones, if it looks similar or very different.
If you notice the pharmacy sign outside, you are completely correct in thinking that I'm taking you to a pharmacy. But not just any pharmacy. This particular one happens to be 700 years old and is inside a Franciscan church. And it's so popular that a lot of famous politicians from all over the world have come to visit it. So they've created a poster with all these different flags with famous signatures under each one. Pretty cool. This painting behind me was a representation of Dubrovnik in the 17th century. Obviously there were no drones, no planes, no flying cameras back then like there are now. So this is literally what people thought it looked like based on their observations of the city uh, from mountaintops, from hilltops. It's really amazing uh, to think how much it stayed similar in terms of layout, but also how much it's changed in terms of who visits it and how we perceive it now. About to go to a Delhi exhibition here in Dubrovnik. I'm super excited because he is my favorite ever painter and I didn't even know this was on until I got here and I saw it and obviously I had to go in. Putting all my other plans on hold for about 10 minutes uh, just in time for me to explore what's inside. I'm finding that Dubrovnik is exceptionally well preserved for the amount of years that it has been here. So everything from the cobbled streets to the stone walls, to the drainage systems, everything dates back to pretty much its original conception, obviously apart from the buildings that had been destroyed in earthquakes and then rebuilt bit by bit over and over again. The other thing that struck me as uh, quite surprising is the fact that Dubrovnik is really big and spacious. When you compare it to other old cities like uh, Couture, like Parast, there are mostly narrow streets and cramped spaces whereas Dubrovnik is pretty spacious and wide in comparison so that was definitely a really nice surprise. I am now walking down the famous stairs that are very crowded because they were also used in Games of Thrones. Game of Thrones or Games of Thrones? Game of Thrones. It just shows you how much I watch it. <laughs> Oh lord, a bit embarrassing. Uh, but anyways, I'm walking down the stairs now and there's a bunch of tour groups, a bunch of people taking pictures. There are beautiful stairs, but a bit hyped up, not gonna lie. <laughs> so I just came here to film this for you guys because I know that amongst you there must be some fans of the show. Ta-da! I am so happy that I came to Dubrovnik during the second half of the day because I get to see this gorgeous sunset. It is honestly breathtaking, especially if you are here in the Stratton, the main street. So on this note, I think it is time to end my Dubrovnik vlog. I hope that you enjoyed it. I hope that you found it just as splendid as I did. Please like, comment and subscribe and keep smiling.